Hello all of my beautiful friends out there. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Nadia and in this video I want to give you guys an update on where I am in this Kundalini awakening and I also want to talk about the difference between a Kundalini awakening and a spiritual awakening. Okay, everybody, I definitely hope that all of you out there are staying uplifted and positive, even though there's a lot of panic going on with the virus and everything. I'm, I'm pretty cool about it. I'm laid back. I'm just not stressing. I'm not worried. I think there's a part of me that understands that worrying and panicking is not going to help me. It's actually the only thing I can do is take care of myself, take care of my family, and stay positive. That's, that's pretty much it. Other than that, we still have to live and we're not about to sit around and suffer and panic and stress out over something that we can't control. I hope you guys are doing the same. Okay, now for those of you out there, there's a hawk that's trying to take over my video. Alright, for those of you out there who have seen my other videos uh, uh, and my updates about the Kundalini awakening and the symptoms that I experienced, one of my symptoms with this kundalini awakening is remembering. I'm actually starting to remember stuff. That's what's happening. So in some of my videos, in my other videos where I would share updates on my symptoms, I actually would talk about when this first happened and I actually was a little off. I said I was 19, but I was actually 20 or 21 because this happened in 98. So now I'm starting to be able to put a lot of it together. So when this happened, uh, in 98, this intense tingle of energy in the spine that would keep me up, it would wake me up every time I would doze off. Very intense, very uncomfortable. This is something that actually happened to me about three or more times every year for about 20 years. Now, I don't wanna scare any of you. If any of you out there are having any kind of intense symptoms of a Kundalini awakening, I don't want you to think that you're going to suffer with this or experience it for 20 years like I did. One of the reasons why I think that won't happen to you all is because you actually know what it is. You actually, you're watching these videos, you're learning and you're understanding and you're even figuring out some things that you can do to help you with the process. When I went through it, I had no clue what it was and I was afraid. I was panicking and now when I think about the, what I've told people over the years, I told, I don't know how many people I told that someone had put voodoo on me. Someone had put a curse on me. That is what I thought. So now I'm like, wow, I was really sounding like a crazy person because I had no clue what it is or what it was. I feel like the intensity of the symptoms that I was feeling was also because I was fighting it. I was fighting it because I didn't have any clue what it was. So I had no idea what to do except panic and cry and, and just feel like I'm suffering or, or being punished. That intense tingling symptom definitely slowed down over the years. It died down, the intensity of it. The last time I felt that was probably about a year ago and it was very mild. I remember dozing off and it happened maybe once or twice and stopped me from, uh, from going to sleep. Like it kind of woke me up, but it was a, just a milder version. So over the years, it died down and it wasn't as intense as it was in the beginning. Now, as far as the symptoms and, and the things that I'm feeling now, this is why I relate more to a spiritual awakening because it's not the same as those very intense symptoms that I experienced with the, the awakening of this active Kundalini energy. Now, like I said, remembering is one of the things that's happening with me. I'm starting to remember a lot. Just like when I made, I made the angel number 1010 video, when I was researching for that video, I suddenly remembered seeing 101010, which was the due date of an ectopic pregnancy that I had 10 years ago. I even remembered that I posted the due date on Facebook and scrolled all the way back and found the due date and I actually posted it in that angel number 1010 video. So that's one of the things that I definitely say is it happening. I'm remembering a lot of things. I can remember dreams that I had, things that I happened when I was little, dreams that I had when I was little. 
it's, it's very wild that I suddenly just start to remember all this stuff. Aside from remembering, night sweats started again. Now this would happen to me over time where I would have night sweats and they slow down and they start again. It's like I gradually keep moving to a different level of awakening and every time I go through this period of night sweats. These hawks are trying to take over my video. I don't know what they're going through. Anyway, now when I talk about night sweats, I mean like real night sweats. Not just a little sweat on you when you wake up. I'm talking about I wake up and I will be, like I'll sit up and sweat will roll down. There'll be a big circle puddle of sweat underneath me and I need a towel. I have to keep a towel near me at night and wipe myself off. It actually happened last night. This has been happening for quite some time and I used to think that it was probably because I'm going through menopause but I am not going through menopause. I have a monthly cycle on time every month. It actually, my cycle has even linked up with the full moon. So whenever there's a full moon, that's when my cycle gets ready to start. So I'm not going through menopause. The night sweats is just something and it's a part of this awakening process. Another symptom or another thing that's happening is I feel like I'm becoming healthier without even trying to be healthy. And one thing I know which is proof of this uh, I talked about in the uh, some of my number synchronicity videos where I went to the hospital in the middle of the night I had used some henna to dye my hair and I had an allergic reaction to it so I went to the hospital in the middle of the night which was a very very strange experience because I felt really at peace and felt happy in the middle of the night at the hospital I'm not even sure why but when I got in the back I realized that my check-in time was 3:33 a.m. And then I got a bill from that hospital and the bill was $777, which was also interesting. But one thing that happened that I didn't mention at the hospital was a nurse who checked my blood pressure in the back. She put the machine on my arm to check my blood pressure and she was doing something. And when she looked back at the machine after it had checked my pressure, she looked at it and she said, did it, did it uh, swell up on your arm? Did it, did it work? I said, yeah, it did. And she's like, oh, that's your blood pressure. Wow, say so your blood pressure is like a teenager's. Whatever you're doing, you're doing something right, keep doing it. So I feel like that is something that's proof of me just becoming healthier without even trying to. I'm not doing anything extra, but I'm becoming healthier. Now I have mentioned the symptoms of the air pressure, and I feel like that is a sign of uh, growing clear audience abilities. Aside from that, I just have a feeling these days of peace, of just not worrying about life too much. That's where I am right now. I feel like maybe I'm just trusting more. I'm just trusting the universe. So I just don't feel worried about anything. Just, just a feeling of peace. Now as far as the differences between a Kundalini awakening and a spiritual awakening. First I'd like to say I had a wonderful conversation yesterday with a beautiful soul named Shreya. She actually is, lives in India and she is very knowledgeable about uh, Kundalini energy and Kundalini awakening because this is a part of, this is something that is a part of her culture. But um, talking to her actually helped to confirm my thoughts about uh, the differences between a Kundalini awakening and a spiritual awakening. It was a beautiful experience. Thank you, Shreya. A Kundalini awakening and a spiritual awakening are very similar, but they're not the same. Clearly, the Kundalini energy is coiled at the base of the spine, at the root chakra. And when it's activated, it tries to work its way up, clearing blockages in the chakras. That's one of the things that separates a Kundalini awakening from a spiritual awakening. I feel like a lot of us, or some of us, are going to go through a kundalini awakening because we need healing it's happening i think it happens for healing and for clearing blockages in the chakras it's not necessarily healing from something that you went through in this life that you could remember it can be from past life i think that a lot of us go through a spiritual awakening and a kundalini awakening because we were spiritual people in a past life now a kundalini awakening seems to cause very intense and uncomfortable physical symptoms. And even though you can have those kind of symptoms 
with a spiritual awakening, it seems to be more on an emotional level with a spiritual awakening. And with the Kundalini awakening, you can actually have a Kundalini awakening without even knowing that you are a spiritual person. And that's what happened with me. I was naturally a spiritual person, but I didn't really know it. And so this Kundalini awakening happened without me studying anything, without me learning anything, without me knowing anything about it. But I believe that this happens to some of us in this life due to things that have happened in our past life. Being a spiritual person can cause you to have a Kundalini awakening. But just because you're spiritual or you've had a spiritual awakening doesn't mean that you will experience a Kundalini awakening. And the simple reason for that is because you probably just don't need to have a Kundalini awakening. It's not something that we all need. Some of us have some deep inner work to be done. And that's the reason why we have experienced a Kundalini awakening. But one isn't greater than the other. Over all the many years that I've experienced the intense, uncomfortable feel feelings and symptoms of the Kundalini energy that actually made me feel like I was being punished, it was just not a good thing, it didn't feel like a good thing, but there was clearly work being done. That All of that uncomfortable shit that I was going through was clearly preparing me for now. There was healing, there was work being done. And now that I went through that, it's now caused the energy to be able to flow more freely, which is why I can now experience the blissful feelings, the heart opening, the th third eye, the throat, all of these different activations of, of different chakras. I experienced this after going through all of that work. A lot of you didn't even have to go through that to get to that point. So one is not better than the other. Please don't look at it that way. At the end of the day, an awakening is an awakening. Whether you want to call it a kundalini awakening, a spiritual awakening, I don't even think we even need to focus so much on what it's called. Either way it goes, it's a wonderful and beautiful life-changing experience. And I wish you guys the best on your journey. I hope this video has been of benefit to you all out there. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining me. Thanks to my subscribers. And I will see you soon. Peace and blessings.